In this video, we're going to be working on Schoolie. A school bus with a Cat C7 in it that needs a new Huey pump, injectors, and flush on the rail. I'm going to be showing you how to do all of the removal and disassembly and flush on the rail in this system, as well as what tools you'll need. Hey guys, you're the Depth Ape channel, and in this video we're going to be working on a schoolie, well technically it's just a school bus, but this is there, it has a C7 and we're going to be doing a Huey kit, which is a Huey pump, flushing the oil rail, all the injectors, and you might be saying, what the heck is a schoolie anyway? That's actually a real word, well it's kind of a made up real word, but school bus that someone has converted into an RV, because RVs are expensive, and school buses are generally well built, and they're inexpensive when they're sold from school districts. Let's get into it. So here we are with our lovely C7, and I really enjoy working on the C7. It's a very simple engine. That's our Huey pump right there, and the C7, the Huey pump, and the injectors were always the biggest problem because the Huey systems had a lot of failures. That's your Huey pressure sensor right there. What we're looking at here is the main oil plug for the Huey rail in the cylinder head. And I got a little riddle, if you know the answer, uh, you don't win anything other than knowing that you know something, but what do these really tiny screws go to? It was something I was working on yesterday. If you know the answer, leave it in the comments. Like I said, don't win anything, but... So, draining the oil, anytime you do a Huey pump in the injectors, you definitely want to get new oil in it, because the oil is what actuates the injectors. So, no point in cleaning everything up if you're going to be reusing the oil. Pull the line there, intake tube line. You're gonna pull the fuel filter. Not pulling the filter housing though, you don't need to. And if you're ever looking for your coolant temp sensor on a C7, it's right there. Difficult to find. Fuel lines here, the fuel transfer pump runs off the back of the Huey pump. So grab your wrenches, folks. And we're gonna start taking some lines off. Now you don't have to remove every fuel line here, but you do need to remove the ones off of the back of the pump. Now this line here, someone has bent the heck out of it. And unfortunately they over tighten it too where it goes onto the Huey pump and the fitting, not the line, is loosening. So kind of a pain. This is very common on the cat fittings because they like fittings that go into things with O-rings. So these are the two bolts. They are 16 millimeter headed bolts, 10 millimeter size bolts. That's what retains the Huey pump on. Now what you do need to do is get, this is the main oil feed line. It is fed from the block behind the air compressor. It is very difficult to replace, but what you want to do is loosen that nut that holds it tight to the Huey pump, and then you need a specialty tool. There's a cat one, but you can also use a die grinder tap it wrench. This is the cat one. There's your part number, 192-5092. But like I said, if you're just doing this once, you don't necessarily need this tool. You can use a die grinder tap it wrench, and it's a quick connect fitting. Notice I never call them quick disconnects because they're generally much harder to disconnect than they are to connect. And this one's missing the rubber kind of seal that goes over this. It's not leaking, but someone's pulled this off and damaged it. So once that's off, now all we got to do is pull the two front bolts. Huey pumps are pretty easy to remove and they also do not need time. So let's take these two bolts out. So you might be wondering why are we doing this Huey kit? And it was troubleshot actually a few weeks ago, and it wasn't troubleshot by me. I didn't get to record it, unfortunately. But uh, let me show you a little trick here. These Huey pump bolts get caught up sometimes, and watch this. If you tap it three times, one, two, three. Now wait for it, folks. Look at that. That's definitely not just some camera trickery there. And uh, yeah, so it got troubleshot. I didn't get to record why, but basically it wasn't building hewing pressure at cranking, had a bunch of ejection actuation pressure faults, pulled the top of the Huey pump, and there was metal in it. Not a ton, but a little bit. This ended up having the original injectors anyway, so it's, it's usually a good idea to just replace the whole kit as one. It ends up saving you money in the end and then you have a reliable repair. Timing sensors are here. Both timing sensors read off of the camshaft and they have to be replaced as a set. So if you're gonna do your timing sensors, now is a good time to do it. Now there's a coolant line that runs over the Huey pump and the valve cover there. I was draining the coolant while I was removing the Huey pump, but I didn't pull the line yet. You don't have to pull the line. It makes it a little easier, but 
You do want to pull it though before you pull the injectors. It was actually still draining coolant by the time I had the Huey pump off. Now that line cracked there, that's very common. And these fittings are really annoying. So you can see this, the fitting is spinning, not the line. And the reason it does that is usually because the fitting on the top side is much larger threads than the one on the bottom side. So it's much easier for that one to spin because it has less holding tension. So it's usually very difficult to get a wrench in here to hold the bottom one. I've tried all different styles of tricks over time, but eventually you'll get it off. It's just very difficult. So here it is, look at that. It's like an eighth inch to a half inch or something. Uh, why? Why do they do that? Not sure. It really uh, destroys our time. So thank you, Caleb, for these pictures. So this is oil and coolant mixed. However, he had already replaced the oil cooler, so I recommended, hey, maybe the liners are the problem, and this was actually a few months ago. Now, it took him a little while to replace the liners, but... That's what they look like. Look at the cavitation. I've never seen a C-15 liner look like this. Horrible cavitation. Um, so what'll happen is, the oil will get forced through the thin sections of the cavitation holes into the cooling system and put oil in your coolant. So this next one here is, this is a flywheel. Look at the mounting bolt holes. A little elongated there. Of course, what does the flywheel bolt do? The crankshaft. Look at the crankshaft bolt holes there. Some of them are broken off. Maybe thinking, wow, this is gonna be an expensive repair. Yeah, this is on a 3516. Rear gear train destroyed crankshaft destroyed ended up costing i believe the got some of these pictures said about hundred and fifty thousand dollars so make sure you torque your bolts let's get back to work here so what we're doing here pulling the valve cover need to pull the injectors now c7 injectors are very simple just have two bolts that hold them in there's no quill tube or anything however they are the hardest to pull injectors out of all the cat engines I've worked on. Something with the seals in them makes them extremely tight in the bore and very difficult to remove. 3126s are not as bad. So those are the injector tops there. You gotta pull your injector connectors off. Don't damage them or try not to as hard as you can because if you break them, you're gonna end up having to replace the injector harness. But if you know what you're doing, you shouldn't have a problem. So you need to pull the two bolts out to retain them, and then they are tight in there. And there's not a good way to pull them out. And this is the only way that I know. Now maybe someone knows of a special tool or something that would pop these out much easier, but this is how I have done probably 500 C7 injectors over my cat working career. So they're very tight in their bore. And these indexing pry bars, which I'll put a link to most of the tools I use in this video, if you want to get them on Amazon anyway, are the best way to pop them out. But I'm going to show you a trick. And unlike my bolt jumping out trick, this actually is a trick that works. And what you're going to do is you're going to pry on the bottom section there on the exhaust side of the bracket. But they're super tight. So what I found is, and it doesn't make it easy, it just makes it less hard. You need to rotate the injector to kind of break up its sealing I don't know how you would even say this. It's mating to the cylinder head itself. The best way to do that is to get a pry bar, put it in the bolt hole, and then pry back and forth a couple times. Now what that'll do is it will move the injector a little bit, not a lot, but a couple times back and forth. That'll help break up the adhesion the injector has to the cylinder head and like I said, it won't make it easy, but it will make it less hard to pop the injector up. I thought I was gonna be picking the easiest one to do here on number two injector, but maybe it's because I haven't done one of these in a couple months, but this one took forever. It took like eight minutes or something to actually pop this injector out. It was tough. This might be one of the hardest C7 injectors to pop out. Actually, all the other ones I did were easier than this one, and they're harder to get to. So some are harder than others, folks. So I've tried different stuff over the years. I've pulled a valve cover base, used bigger pry bars. I've used two pry bars at the same time. 
I just, I don't know of any other way really to get them out there. If you do know, please let me know. But eventually you will be able to pop it out of there. Yes, I'm using a hammer on the pry bar. Hey, look at that, popped out. Let's do an instant replay. So watch the top of the injector here. It's gonna pop out and hopefully it doesn't pop all the way out. Look at that, it popped up about an inch. I actually had a supervisor once, well, before he became a supervisor, he was popping one of these out and he had to pull so hard it popped out of the bore so fast it's, it cracked one of his teeth, it hit him in the face. So be careful with these folks. Now, once it pops the initial portion, you have to get it past the second O-ring, but that is much easier, see? And then you're gonna get a whole bunch of oil and fuel out of this thing, and most of it's gonna go into the cylinder, which there's really nothing you can do about there. And the oil rail itself holds quite a bit of oil, and then there's also a fuel rail, so it's gonna need to drain for a while. We're actually gonna be flushing the system, though. So what we need to do next is get the other five out, and hopefully they don't fight me as much as this one did. So we're gonna speed it up here with a time lapse, but you can see that number two injector is draining. I never just pull them out and put them on a table because they, they're gonna drip a lot of oil and fuel. So I'm pulling all the other hold down bolts out. Hold down bolts in general on cat engines, not reusable. The Huey kit will come with new hold down bolts as well. So I'm trying the two, the two pry bar trick on number one. Number one's tricky because if you spin it too much, the connector on the injector will hit the valve cover base and break it, the injector itself, not the valve cover base. So you gotta be real careful on that one. Number three is difficult because the injector harness goes over it. And then four, five, and six are difficult because they're under the firewall. Now I've done many injectors on rear engine school buses where five and six, you can you can almost can't even touch them, but you, you know, you, you'll learn how to do it. Um, this front engine one's actually easier than the rear engine ones, in my experience. So once all your injectors are out, now you have to worry about cleaning the rail and cleaning the injector bores. So this is what it'll look like with all the injectors out. If you've ever, if you need to run the overhead, now is a good time to do it. Well, any time would be a good time with the valve cover off, but this is a good time to do it. But you wanna evac and flush the rail before you run the overhead because if you rotate that engine with all the oil and fuel in there, it will spray it out of those cylinders like crazy. Now what I'm talking about here is the plugs Gonna remove some of these plugs on the side here. You can remove the main plug, that one in the front, but it is difficult to get that fuel line off and sometimes that plug is super hard to get off. So here is our injectors. These have the original style seals on them. Now, what I'm looking at here is look at where the top seal backup ring is and the intermediate seal. Look at that section there. Do you see how the intermediate seal, well, it's really just a backup ring, is starting to come apart where the gap is. This is very, very common. So once that intermediate seal section snaps there, the main seal is also gonna push through the backup ring in that section where the gap is. And guess what? You're gonna lose your Huey oil pressure. So it's a good idea that these were getting replaced anyways because the seals were getting ready to fail. Now, of course, you can just replace the seals without replacing the injectors, but it's just as much work. So what we're doing here is using a solvent sprayer, blowing out the injector bores, using hexane, brake clean, same thing. And then we're flushing the rail. Now this, all this flush is going to go through the rail, into the injector bores and into the cylinders. Not really anything you can do about that, folks. You're gonna just evacuate as much as you can after the fact. It's just part of the job. So I'm flushing the uh, rail here. Oh, you can see some sprayed out there. You you really want to flush it until you get you can see no oil coming out of the system. Once it's clean, look at that, beautiful. You want to make sure all the carbon is also out of the bottoms of these injector bores. And the reason you want that is because if there's still carbon built up there, it could hang up or cause problems with the injector seals. But Cat wants you to use all sorts of brushes and stuff. I have found that just flushing them is usually the best way to go. So what we're gonna be doing here is a vacuum brake bleeder with a little suction hose on it. And we're just gonna pull a vacuum. Look at that. That is satisfying watching it pull all of that nasty fluid right out of the cylinders there. It's gonna pull quite a bit. Well over a quart, because remember we have fuel, oil, and this hexane mixture in there. You're gonna pull all of it out of the cylinders. I generally recommend at least once out of each cylinder. 
I usually go back, back and forth twice. And this is pretty much disassembled completely. Still waiting on the parts, folks, so I have not been able to make the second part of this video, but this is how you completely disassemble your C7 Huey system and get it ready for installation. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.